In a world of increasing web services, modern data center-centric companies like Facebook are choosing to decompose a complex web service into distributed microservices. With the end of Denard scaling, successive server generations running these microservices exhibit diminishing performance returns. Hence, it is imperative to understand how important microservices spend their CPU cycles to determine acceleration opportunities across the global server fleet. To this end, we undertake a comprehensive characterization of Facebook's top production microservices serving live user traffic. We find that the main functionality of a microservice, such as performing machine learning inference, composes only a small fraction of its net execution time. During the remaining time, a microservice performs common operations, such as receiving a request via I.O., deserializing, or decompressing it in order to facilitate the main microservice logic. Hence, accelerating the main logic alone can yield only limited performance gains. Instead, accelerating these significant and common building blocks across microservices can improve the performance of our global server fleet. However, introducing hardware acceleration in production is risky at scale as performance bounds induced by offload overheads such as offload preparation time, queuing delays, or offload latencies can make the hardware not meet expectations. To identify these performance bounds early in the hardware design phase, we develop Accelerometer, an analytical model that estimates gains from hardware acceleration. We validate Accelerometer in production and also show how you can use Accelerometer to make well-informed hardware investments. If you are interested to know more, stay tuned to this video and watch me explain this work to Po. Hello everyone, I'm Akshita Shriraman from the University of Michigan. Before I get started, I wanted to ask you, how many of you are active Facebook users? Show of hands. Every time you like a post on Facebook, have you ever wondered about the underlying hardware processing your request? What should that hardware even look like? That's exactly what I'm going to tell you about today. I'm going to tell you about the system level implications of your activities on Facebook and how we were able to use that data to better understand future data center hardware designs. Modern user-facing web services such as social media platforms and online messaging are increasingly being composed of distributed microservices such as ad serving and key value serving. These microservices communicate with each other in order to supply a response back to the end user. Now, since these web services are typically user-facing, they face very stringent latency constraints in the form of service level objectives or SLOs. Due to these stringent performance requirements and the fact that Denard scaling has ended, modern data center research has started to focus more and more on building customized platforms for each individual application functionality or microservice, so much so that these customized platforms are increasingly starting to look like the Batmobile. But what are data center operations that are worth accelerating? be it in terms of customizing the CPU or designing a dedicated accelerator device. To answer this question, if we look to academia for inspiration, you will find that academics have designed a wide set of accelerators, ranging all the way from those that perform machine learning inference to even ultrasound imaging. So we are left with the notion that, well, perhaps we should accelerate everything. While these customized hardware platforms can certainly be promising in terms of performance, we find that building a custom platform for each individual microservice operation is not a very cost-efficient option due to economies of scale. So instead, we ask the question, what are key microservice operations that are truly worth accelerating? One way to answer this question is to look at the accelerators that have already been built for some microservice operations. 
For example, Google built the TPU for machine learning inference. Now, let's say we take one of those machine learning inference accelerators and we completely optimize away the ML inference portion of Facebook's newsfeed microservice, which is heavy on ML inference. How much do you expect newsfeed's throughput to increase by? No, turns out that if you completely remove the ML inference portion of this ML inference heavy newsfeed microservice, its throughput improves by only about 1.49x. So clearly we haven't been using Amdahl's law to effectively understand what to accelerate in a data center. To clearly understand key acceleration opportunities in a data center, in this work, we study seven important Facebook microservices that run on hundreds of thousands of servers across Facebook's global data center fleet. Web, which is a front-end microservice, Feed1 and Feed2, which are two microservices that belong to Facebook's Newsfeed application, Ads1 and Ads2 perform ad serving, and Cache1 and Cache2 are very similar to key value store deployments. To understand acceleration opportunities across these microservices, we ask the question, how do these microservices even spend their CPU cycles? Are there common overheads across microservices that can perhaps help us decide what future hardware designs should look like? To answer these questions, we first undertake a comprehensive characterization of Facebook's production microservices serving live user traffic. We characterize leaf functions such as memcopy that show up at the end of a microservices call trace. We also characterize individual call traces to get a breakdown of microservice functionalities, such as performing ML inference or key value serving. Surprisingly, our characterization reveals that a microservice spends only a small portion of its execution time performing the main microservice logic, such as performing ML inference. The remaining bulk time is spent in facilitating that main microservice logic via operations such as I.O. processing, compression, serialization, etc. that we call orchestration logic. Moreover, we find that these orchestration overheads are common across microservices. Hence, these orchestration overheads are an important acceleration opportunity as accelerating a dominant orchestration overhead doesn't just improve a single microservice, but results in performance benefits across the global data center fleet. However, designing and building hardware accelerators for these orchestration overheads is risky at scale as these accelerators might not yield expected gains due to performance bounds precipitated by offload-induced overheads. To identify such performance bounds early in the hardware design phase, we develop Accelerometer, an analytical model for hardware acceleration that estimates a realistic speedup in microservices. To confirm that Accelerometer estimates the speedup realistically, we validate Accelerometer in production using three retrospective case studies. And finally, we show how you can use Accelerometer to decide quickly between good and bad acceleration strategies in order to make well-informed hardware investments. During the rest of this talk, I will first describe our characterization of Facebook's production microservices and describe these orchestration overheads that, well, I've been making you feel bad about not knowing, explain the idea behind Accelerometer, our analytical model for hardware acceleration, talk about how we validated Accelerometer in production using retrospective case studies, and finally show how you can use Accelerometer to make well-informed hardware investments. All right, let's first begin with the leaf function and service functionality characterization of Facebook's production microservices. We first characterize the CPU cycles that are spent in leaf functions across Facebook's microservices and also compare them against Google's workloads. We characterize leaf functions by identifying the functions at the end of a call trace and we bucket them into broad categories. For example, we classify a mem copy as a leaf function of type memory. 
Similarly, we have other leaf categories such as synchronization, math libraries, and ZSTD for compression. We find that several leaf function types dominate across microservices, so developing hardware optimizations for them can improve the performance of our global fleet. For example, several microservices spend significant time in memory movement, allocations, and freeze, so optimizations such as wider SIMD or processing in memory can improve these microservices. Similarly, several microservices also spend significant time in kernel operations, such as context switching. Hence, there is a real need for future research that can minimize the number of context switches or reduce the penalty that we pay for each context switch. We also perform a detailed breakdown of each of these leaf function categories that you can check the paper for more details about. All right, let's next look at the CPU cycles spent in various microservice functionalities. In this graph, we divide a microservices operations into two types, operations that are a part of the main microservice logic, such as performing a machine learning inference and feed, and operations that only facilitate the main microservice logic, which we call orchestration work. From this graph, you can clearly see that orchestration overheads dominate across microservices, with microservices spending as little as 20% of cycles in performing the main microservice logic. Hence, we should really start to focus on accelerating these orchestration overheads across microservices. But what are these orchestration overheads that we need to accelerate? So we next break down the yellow portion of this graph, which is the orchestration overheads. In this graph, we break down the orchestration logic into operations such as sending or receiving an I.O., processing the I.O., compressing and serializing the request, etc. Note that prediction and ranking can also be considered as the core application logic for those machine learning microservices. The first important observation we make is that not only do these microservices have a high orchestration overhead, but the orchestration overheads are common across microservices. For example, several microservices spend significant cycles in sending and receiving I.O., as well as in operations like compression and serialization. This means that the hardware customizations that we have been developing for the main microservice logic is not going to improve performance by a great extent. Instead, accelerating these orchestration overheads can have a greater benefit as they improve the performance across the global data center fleet by accelerating not just one microservice, but several microservices. I know I showed you a lot of graphs with a lot of bars, but the main takeaway that I want you to remember from this characterization is that, yes, it is good to accelerate the main microservice logic, but that can only improve your performance by so much since modern microservices have significant orchestration overheads. Moreover, these orchestration overheads are common across several important microservices. Hence, accelerating these orchestration overheads can improve the performance of not just one microservice, but across the global data center fleet. Investing in hardware acceleration for these orchestration overheads involves several stages. We must first design the hardware, test it in various scenarios, and provision capacity to match projected load to deploy the hardware. All this effort that goes into incorporating a new hardware can be justified if the hardware meets expectations by accelerating the orchestration overhead. However, investing in hardware acceleration is risky at scale as the hardware can easily underperform due to performance bounds precipitated by offload-induced overheads. To identify these performance bounds early in the hardware design phase, we develop Accelerometer, an analytical model for hardware acceleration. Accelerometer estimates the throughput improvement and the per request latency reduction from accelerating these orchestration overheads. Accelerometer has two design axes. First, it models various acceleration strategies, for example, on-chip acceleration, such as an AES and NI instruction to improve encryption, 
off-chip acceleration, like communicating with an FPGA via a PCIe, and remote acceleration, for example, communicating with an ML inference accelerator over the network. Accelerometer also models various microservice threading designs that can be used to offload, such as synchronous versus asynchronous communication with an accelerator. To describe a synchronous offload, let's first consider that your host is executing along and it executes C cycles in one second. Based on Amdahl's law, these C cycles can be divided into the portion that needs to be accelerated and the portion that we're not accelerating for now using a constant alpha whose value is less than one. If we were to execute these alpha times C cycles on an accelerator that has an acceleration factor of A, the cycles spent on this operation would be decreased by A. Unfortunately, most speed up estimates, they stop here and they report the speed up based on this new accelerated value. However, there are several other overheads that show up during a synchronous offload. The host needs to spend O0 cycles in preparing the offload via operations like memory copies, allocations, and freeze. And I showed you how these operations can have a high overhead. Offloads can have a queuing delay of queue cycles while waiting for the accelerator to become available. Then there's the offload transfer latency L, which can range from nanoseconds to milliseconds, depending on whether you're performing an on-chip, off-chip, or a remote offload. You incur these overheads for n such offloads in one second, and you end up with all these offload overheads affecting your net speedup. In this synchronous offload, we consider a scenario where there is a single thread running on the CPU that waits in the blocked state for the accelerator's response. However, several of our microservices, they oversubscribe threads while operating synchronously to improve the throughput. With thread oversubscription, the host does not waste any CPU cycles in waiting for the accelerator's response, since the host schedules a free thread to process successive requests. Hence, the speedup is not affected by the time spent in the accelerator. Note that while the cycles spent in the accelerator do not affect the throughput speedup, they will still affect the per request latency. Since the operating system needs to switch to a different thread to start processing successive requests, as well as switch back to the old thread after the accelerator's response returns, we incur a context switch penalty of O1. While these context switch penalties can be really small, well, they typically range from 5 to 20 microseconds, they can really degrade the per request latency of a microservice like cache, whose whole net response latency itself is few tens of microseconds. Moreover, such an accelerator might make it feasible to incur a throughput gain at the cost of a per request latency degradation. Service operators can then use accelerometer to ensure that the latency SLO is not violated in such cases. With asynchronous offloads, cycles spent in the accelerator do not critically affect speedup, since the same asynchronous thread can continue processing successive requests as it maintains the state of every request using finite state machines. Hence, even the context switch overheads that we saw from before aren't encountered in the asynchronous design. Next, I'm going to show you one example of how we validated accelerometer in production. In this example, we consider an off-chip encryption accelerator that operates asynchronously. In this asynchronous timing diagram, I'm showing you the values for each of these model parameters that we determined using device specification sheets and micro benchmarks. Note that several of these model parameters, such as network traversal times, once calculated, they can be used for different accelerators. Using accelerometer's asynchronous speedup equation, we estimate that accelerating encryption will speed up this cache microservice by 8.6%. In reality, you can see how the encryption accelerator indeed improves the encryption portion of the secure IO operation thereby improving the net speedup by 
We also validated against an on-chip case study using an ASNI instruction and a remote case study with ML inference being performed in a remote node. Across all three case studies, we find that accelerometer estimates the speed up with an error that's less than 3.7%. Finally, I'm going to show you one example of how you can use accelerometer to make well-informed hardware investments. In this graph, I'm showing you how we applied accelerometer to determine hardware acceleration for one of our orchestration overheads, compression. We picked on-chip and off-chip accelerators proposed by Academic Works and used accelerometer to estimate their speed up for both the synchronous and asynchronous threading designs. We compare the speed up with the ideal microservice speed up, which is the bar on the far left, which is when the compression overhead is completely optimized away. You can see how accelerometer is very powerful as it enables you to have a one shot view of how the various acceleration strategies compare against each other in order to help you make well informed hardware investments. In conclusion, we saw how orchestration overheads can be significant and common across microservices. To accelerate these orchestration overheads effectively, we first need to analytically model performance bounds from hardware acceleration. We proposed accelerometer, an analytical model for hardware acceleration. Finally, I showed you how we validated accelerometer in production and also told you about how you can use accelerometer in your own environment to make well-informed hardware investments. Music